Bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, did you guys hear that echo? Yeah. yeah, I think I know why. The echo because it's playing through the speakers. Anyway, I don't know. I'm not sure how to fix that, but it's okay. Does it kind of bother you, the echo? It's kind of weird. but Anyway, let's take a look at some material here because I was thinking about it yesterday. Like, man, this echo's going on. Um, I might be able to, yeah, let's just do that. Okay. Now the echo's gone. Is that right? Let's see if we still have the, the sound. That sounds a little normal. That sounds better. Oh, wait a minute. I hear the echo here now. Anyway, whatever. Why is there an echo? Okay, folks, let's just take a look at this stuff here. Let's look at the website, and um, sounds like I'm at a baseball game. So I'm going to look at this website, and we're going to go to 241 here. Now, remember, worksheets and video library. So I'm going to share with you guys something here that's kind of on this website as we update everything. Go scroll down to... Um, it's actually down around here, but I'm going to probably move it when I get home. We're going to work on part of these here. Okay, so this is um, part of what I'm going to have you guys work on, and I'm going to put that in the chat here. So, 
anyway. So if you guys go back and look at this, some some of my students, maybe in the trick courses, have said to me that they do go back and look at these videos. Do you guys do that too? Anybody? You guys go back? Okay, good. Do you find it helpful? Okay, good. That's the whole idea. If you find it helpful, you go back and you go take a look. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Uh, okay, now what I'm going to say to you guys Remember I said something like to you, probably one of the most useful classes you guys could ever take is this class, Trigonometry, okay, because it helps explain the world around you. Um, so working with, as you guys know, I sent you some, um, oh, whatever that's called, I guess, extra credit on right triangle information. That's really geometry in, in some ways, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and now you're dealing with law of sines and law of cosines, right? So the applications are extremely important, ladies and gentlemen. The whole reason you do this is for the applications. So that's kind of my perspective on math is there's applications of it. It's just not this sort of game like Monopoly that exists and that people just don't use it, right? People use it all the time. It's extremely important. And this is why you guys are here to do that because it has uses. Um, that's the whole thing about this. If you don't, um, you know look at how to use it, it almost makes things meaningless to study, in my opinion. All right, so you might say, oh, okay, how do we use this? Well, let's identify this here, okay? So what I'm going to do here now is I have this for you. Uh, let's transition over to the iPad. And that is weird. Oh, let me get rid of that. Get rid of that, and I'm going to get rid of this because this is not a part of your class. This is part of another class, okay? And so now we're looking at some applications. So if you guys looked at the Law of Science homework, did it have applications there? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Hopefully. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Let me see if I can scoot a bit <laughs> and uh, no this was in the iPad there you go all right law of signs applications there we go now we're good we're good so let's take a look tracking a satellite ladies and gentlemen so this is kind of a, a tracking the satellite kind of situation where it says if we read this because you know you want to read it the path of a satellite orbiting the earth causes it to pass directly over two stations a and b and so here's kind of the story Obviously, I put here, here's the what? The satellite. Here's the stations A, station B. Now, the ground, as you guys can see, is labeled here. So they have that thing labeled as the ground. Um, and so what do they say about this? They are 65 miles apart. So the satellites here are 65 miles apart. So we want to label that. This is 65 miles, okay? So we start to work with some of these things. So you got 65 miles. There's a reason why we study law of signs. There's a really reason why we study solving triangles. This is the reason. So we're looking down here, ladies and gentlemen, and we have this distance that's given. And that's just in the information that they give us here. Okay, 65 miles apart. And then they say when the satellite is on one side of the two stations, so the satellite was moving. I guess it's moving this, in this direction. And now the satellite is on one side of both stations. That's what they're saying. Okay. The angle of elevation. Now you say, what do you mean an angle of elevation? Do you guys remember the definition of an angle of elevation? That's an important detail. Okay, so you say, what do you mean? Why, why is that so important that you have this angle of elevation and it measures 70 and 80 degrees respectively? What's the definition? Do you guys remember? You have to have an eyeball. 
So at position A and B here, really on the ground, you're looking up at the satellite. Is that true? Remember the definition? So the ground level here and that path, this is ground. So you can think of this as L1 and this is L2. So they don't say the satellite is moving horizontal to the ground, but in the picture, it says that. So L1 is parallel to L2, okay? That means that's really an important fundamental idea that's extremely important. They don't say that, but that's what's going on there, at least in the picture. So you got these angle of elevations given to be both, what, 70 degrees and 80 degrees respectively. Is that right? And they even indicate that. So they're telling us this. This, this is an angle of elevation. The object is a satellite. So you're looking up. It's elevated. That's an, that's an extremely important detail. And then what are they asking here, ladies and gentlemen? What's, what's question A? Do you guys see question A? What are they saying? How far is a satellite from station A? Yeah, what are you talking about? How far is a satellite from station A? So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to say this. They're asking for that distance. Is that true? You guys with me on this? So for question A, I don't know what you want to call that. How far? I'm going to call that D. D for distance. You guys with me on that one? That whole idea? So take a look at that. I'm reading for question A. They're saying, hey, this is how far is a, is a satellite from position A. So there you go. That's going to be distance D. All right. Now, believe it or not, this is an application of the law of what? Science. This is why you're here to study this, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we're here. It's not just to learn the material that is independent of an application. The whole idea is to learn it so you can apply it. That's the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen. That's where, that's where the gold is. So, okay, you might say to me, how do I know, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a law of science question? How do we really know it's law of science? Wish I had my sound effects. I got to make that a priority when I get some time to kind of bring back my sound and I might be able to, and just have some couple of buttons there. Huh. All right, what do we think? How do we know it's law, it's law of science? Didn't we have various cases for law of science, right? If I look at this picture here, is there any angle I can find here so I can say that this is law of science? Look at that angle. Do you guys realize I have actually... I can get that angle from the picture. How, wh what's the relationship? How do I know what this angle is going to be? Huh? Good. It's what? Yeah. That should measure 100 degrees. Is that true? How do we know that's 100? Supplementary? Remember that? They're supplemental. That's, straight, it's a, straight, that's a straight line. So remember what we did in that first week. I think I gave you guys some of that stuff. Is that right? And that's where the geometry idea comes from. Geometry. Supplementary angles. So you might say, oh my God, Mr. Judge, they're going to make me remember that supplementary angle? Yeah. Okay. Now you say, what am I really looking at? How do I know that this is law of signs? Anybody want to tell me? How do we know? Yes. Um, well, be careful. Be careful. Not angle, angle, side. You're close. I understand what you're saying. There are two angles on a side, but what do we really call it? You're staring at it right here. This is really what? Angle. Sorry. What is that? What is this? Angle, side angle. Why is that an important detail? Because the side, ladies and gentlemen, of 65 miles 
is between two what? Angles. All right, you guys okay with that? You guys with me on this one? That is how you know that this is a law of signs situation. So law of signs is going to be a big deal. Now, this is not a right triangle now, is it? So what I sometimes have students do is they, they go back to right triangles and they know that's not a right triangle. There's no 90, there's no 90 degrees. Remember, if this is an angle side angle situation, do you guys remember we can get that third angle easily? It's not really asked, but we may need it. I don't know. Do we need it? Oh no. Yeah, I think we do need it. Don't we need that for angle side angle? Could you guys tell me what angle is that right in here? Because this is where we started our, our adventure into law of signs. We started right here. Do you guys remember when you get two angles, you always get the third. Isn't the sum of the interior angles of any triangle 180? So what does that have to be? It has to be 10 degrees. Is that right? You say, how did we know? Because 180... Minus 100 minus the 70 degrees gives us that 10 degrees. So, ladies and gentlemen, we know that this measures 10 degrees. That is necessary for us to work and find that distance. So, we need this. Ladies and gentlemen, this stuff is doable. You know, um, I always tell students this because it's true. And I know when I was a student, I never knew this. Nobody ever told me. I had, to, I had to discover this myself, right? What do you think I was doing on Easter Day besides praying to my, well, it's not a religious course, but, you know, I was praying that day. But besides that, what else? Because it's Easter, by the way, right? Uh, yeah, I spent a little time with family, but you know I was working? I remember writing this letter of recommendation for a student of mine. He's, he's, a, he's a STEM student. He's going to get into this UCLA summer program. He's a very good student. But you want to know what makes him a good student? He started in, uh, in uh, elementary algebra. You want to know what makes him a really good student? You want to know what makes me really impressed by this kid? Yeah, I had him for calculus one, calculus two. And this guy is, uh, how should I put this? He understands how to, how to do things. You say, what do you mean? He has that strong desire to succeed. So he does his work. He follows up. You know, he does what he's supposed to do. He does everything he's supposed to do. This kid is a fabulous. So, you know, I need to write a letter of recommendation for a summer program. You think I'm going to spend my Easter writing that letter? Absolutely. You guys see what I'm saying? You don't stop working. That's my point to you guys. You don't stop. It never ends, even on Easter. It's a matter of, what did, what did Jaime Escalante call that? Do you guys know what he called that? It's very simple. It's called ganas, desire, will. And if you have that, you can do anything. Will. get that will he has that he has that so that's what i put in the letter i actually put that stuff on my easter easter break it's all good so okay ladies and gentlemen do you guys want to get that will <laughs> how do we get that will that's the secret how do you get that will ladies and gentlemen do you guys know i don't know for me i i just decided to do my homework every day i said you know what i'm tired of fooling around I didn't, I didn't um, play with Xbox. We didn't even have Xbox. Sony PlayStation. Just said, you know what? I'm going to do my homework every day. That's what I'm going to do. Tired of, uh, you know, fooling around. So this is how this kid is. He's an amazing kid. All right. What does law of sign say? Do you guys remember? Don't I have opposite right here? Let's do this here. I have an angle and I have an opposite side. So what does that mean? Sine 10 degrees over what? 65. What does that equal? 
Oh, I have an angle and I have an opposite side. That is sine of what? 70 degrees over what? Over D. Do you guys remember doing some of that for homework? Cross multiplication, do you guys remember that? Proportions, how does that work? Right, remember this is gonna be D now, sine 10 degrees becomes what? 65, sine 70 degrees. What happens now here, ladies and gentlemen? Sine of what? 10 degrees, sine of what? 10 degrees, that goes away. What does your D become? All right? So I'm going to cancel that because it went away. We canceled that. So there's our D, ladies and gentlemen. What does that give you? We're going to have to get out the TI calculator. Mode, look for degrees, okay? Are we in degree mode? You guys know what might happen one day? You're in the wrong mode of your calculator. We're in degrees. Okay, we're going to hit what? 65 sine of 70 divided by sine of 10. So what is this D going to be? You guys know? Let's go out to the nearest whole number. Is that 352? Okay, 352, ladies and gentlemen. Right? We entered this in the calculator. We made sure that it was in what? Degrees. So 351.7 is about 352 miles. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. There it is. So we know that that distance is 352 miles. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get rid of all of this distraction here, okay? So we just found this to be, this distance, 352 miles. This distance right here. And all because we know law of what? Signs. Easy peasy, lemon, what? Squeezy, all right? All right, what does this next one say? You guys see that? What's, the, what's question B? What is the altitude of the satellite above the ground? So, you know, we have to talk about this stuff because, you know, sometimes people might even say, hey, Mr. Judge, what do they mean by altitude, right? What do you think they mean by the altitude? of the satellite. What is the definition of altitude? It's like, the, it's, it's not just, well, yeah, it is height, right? But be careful about this, because I was one of those kids who I was like, what do you mean by height? You know what you mean by height, ladies and gentlemen? That was me. You know what they mean? Let's see if I can draw this here. This here is the altitude. I'll call that A. Okay, and I'm going to move that 352 this is 352 miles. There's your altitude. You want to know what I need to do, though? I want to make very clear about altitude, some very important fact. You know what it is? That this is a corner. You see, if you ever want to know about altitude, it is a strictly vertical height. Do you guys know what I'm saying? Vertical. It's not a diagonal. We just found a diagonal. 352 was the diagonal. So you might say, well, what do they mean by an altitude? It's a vertical height. So this is an important detail. Why, does I, why do I want to point this detail out? What does that mean? That means this is a what? 90 degree angle. Is that right? 
Why is that important? Because they're asking us for the what? For the altitude. This is A now. So question two, or B in this case, is what's the altitude? So they're going to want us to have that height. Ladies and gentlemen, why did Mr. Judge do that assignment over spring break? Well, two reasons. I think it's unacceptable to people to not know how to solve a right triangle. It's unacceptable. That's how I really feel. Unacceptable. Not only that, second reason is, because take a look. I use these things. We use these things to get answers. I can use my right triangle information, ladies and gentlemen, to do what? To answer this. What do I mean by that? Let me get rid of this. Do you guys happen to see a right triangle anywhere? I see one. Do you guys see it there? Look at that. What am I going to use to find the altitude? Anybody remember? What is it? What do I use? You guys do the assignment. It's going to be what? Right? I'm going to have to erase this. So it's in the video. I wish I, I wish I did something with this. I'm going to have to dig this out. I, I wrote this years ago. Anyway, what do we use? What's the definition? We have the angle 80 degrees, right? And then we have what? Opposite hypotenuse. Oh, isn't that sine? I'm not awake yet. Sine 80 is A over 352. So in other words, I just go back to geometry. A right triangle. And can I solve for A? How do you solve for A? What is A equal? 352 sine 80 degrees. So ladies and gentlemen, this is why I did what I did, because I do know you're going to have to use this to do an application. Meaning 352 sine of what? 80. And guess what I'm able to get, ladies and gentlemen? Now this is the altitude. What's the altitude going to be? Let's go to the nearest whole number. That's 340 what? Let's go to the ones position, right? The decimal to the right is a six. What does that mean to do to the decimal to the left, which is also a six? Add one. And what do you guys get? 347 what? Miles. That is your altitude. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have used right triangle information. 347, we should put miles. I just want to let you guys know it's miles. We use right triangle information to find the altitude based on a couple of measures. So, based on a certain amount of measures, we can deduce altitude. And that's how, this is why you guys are here to do this in a trig course. It's kind of like a major idea behind trigonometry. So when you go to other classes, you know, um, that have a prerequisite of this material, there's an expectation. You guys know law of sines, law of cosines, and how to do these applications. That's the expectation. Because now what you're there to study in some of those other courses is actually how to use these things. That's the whole idea. This is why we do what we do. So I'm a person, if you guys notice, you say, boy, that Mr. Judge, he does work on applications. Yes. Why? Because I know where you're headed, you use them. That's the whole idea. And yes, you might want to get used to this idea, like I'm saying, you never stop working. It just doesn't end. I used to, as a kid like you guys, I used to think, oh, one day I can't wait to stop working. I'm still waiting for the day. That day hasn't came. Even on Easter, writing a letter of a recommendation. Between praying, spending time with family, I got to knock out that letter. Doesn't end. So embrace it. Get used to it. What do you guys think? Isn't that everything we worked on? Well, I think so. Did Coach ever do that kind of stuff? <laughs> no? 
What did coach do? Just throw the ball around in the classroom? Just hang out with everybody? Give everybody a high five? At least give people flaming Hots or Snickers? Man, should have been coach. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You know, it's kind of interesting. I used to bring my daughter. My daughter, when she was a little girl, I mean, back then in the day that we're talking about, it's a different time. You know, students would come in on a Saturday. They'd want you to come in on a Saturday. Just help prepare for a test. They were like, say, oh, Mr. Judge, can you please come in on a Saturday? We're going to have this test. And that was common back then. This is like 20 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Times have changed. And so you'd come in. You know, and since sometimes, you know, to have my daughter sit there because, you know, who's going to watch her on a Saturday? So I'd bring her in. She'd sit there and she would uh, just watch, you know. She learned how to take notes. That's how she learned how to take notes, just coming with me on Saturday when I'd lecture. And so she just got into that habit. It's weird. It's weird how you pass that stuff on to your kids. You know, so she was taking notes. She used to bring her in. You know, she, just, she learned all those little things. And then some lectures I'd bring her in, not even on a Saturday, but some lectures. And if I was like a two, two or three minutes late or five minutes late for a lecture, you know what would happen? And I'd walk in the room with my daughter. You know what you would hear? You'd hear this sound like, oh, <laughs> meaning, oh, he showed up. And my daughter was like, dad. Why did they react that way toward you walking in a room? Oh. So I explained her, well, sweetheart, no, it's not that they resented your dad being there. It's just, you know, they thought they had a free day and they didn't. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's a funny story, personally. So she learned this. Oh, it's funny. I don't know. Interesting. Here's another one of my favorite examples, ladies and gentlemen, the flight of an airplane that's very, very similar to what this was. Very similar questions. They're all applications for law signs, and then we'll see law cosines. So here's the deal for flight of an airplane, right? And I know that it's an extremely important thing to read through it and even see the picture. Because sometimes there's details they don't even tell you as you read, and you want to talk about those details, right? Like, for example, the flight of a plane, they don't tell you that it's flying horizontal to the ground. They don't tell you. So here's what they say. The flight of a plane, they're saying a pilot is flying over a straight highway. They just say straight highway. And you go, what do you mean by that? All they mean is that the flight path here and the ground level here, two lines again, call it L1, L2, that these lines are what? These are parallel, ladies and gentlemen. That's what they're saying. So they don't even say that, and I wish they did, but okay, a pilot is flying over a straight highway, okay, there you, there you go. And, you know, the reason why I put this phrase horizontal, because that's related to a couple of things, but I just want to communicate to people that those, those are, or horizontal is parallel there. He determines, or she determines, the angle of depression. Now, when they use the phrase angle of depression, what are they talking about? Because that's an extremely important detail, too. What's an angle of depression, if you guys remember? The definition of which... If it's an angle of depression, your eyeball is above the object. So this is the, the eyeball of the pilot. So now the pilot's eyeball is there. And now you need an object. And you say, what are the objects? To two posts. I, I, when I read this, I'm like, what's a post? I don't know. It's a, what's a post anyway? It's just like a, an object, I guess, on a highway. So in other words, you got two posts, and again, here, the, the pilot is looking at post A, post B, 
two po- two posts. And the pilot says they're eight miles apart. You go, oh, so this distance is what again? Eight. You guys with me on that? So the pilot is going, okay, I got two posts eight miles apart. And you got these angle of depressions that are 35 and 46 degrees, respectively. So remember the definition. Horizontal, we already have labeled. To the object, that angle is 35. The other is 46. So you're not free to put your angles anywhere you want. The definition of angle of depression and angle of elevation is in play. Remember, in both cases, you need a horizontal. You need an object, you need a horizontal. And it's the angle between the object and the horizontal. And so you might say, oh, what is that? Well, here's the object between, here's that line, because your eye sees things in a straight line. So this is why we know it's 35 degrees that goes there. And this is why we know over here, between the horizontal and that line, it's 46 degrees. So the picture is consistent here. And I'm going to make the claim here, ladies and gentlemen. This is, again, law of signs. How do we know it's law of signs? What situation do we have for law of signs? Remember, if you go back to our law of signs work, Law of signs, where are you? Okay, law of signs. We got side, side angle, the ambiguous case. That was law of signs. Go back from the beginning. All that work we did. I think I have it way up here. Do we have it here? Where is it? Oh, here we go. It applies to what situations? Law of signs. Angle, side angle. Side angle angle or side side angle. This is the essence of law of science. So what I'm saying is how do I know that this application question is a law of science? Because it's not clear. It's not clear. What are my angles? You guys say but the angles are outside the triangle. Let me change my colors. Green, what's this? Orange, I'm gonna change those colors. You know what I'm gonna make the claim is? I know what this angle is, it's green. I know what this angle is, it's orange. But my question to you is why? How do I know that? Now there's a reason, and we actually worked on it. There's a very good reason, ladies and gentlemen. Let me do this. What are you really looking at? Here's, here's something here. What are we really looking at here? Oh, that's weird. What is this? Isn't this another line? But why am I using all of this important detail? What is this really? It's a transversal. Yes, that's the whole idea. So the stuff we already worked on, is right here. You remember that? A transversal? So what this says to me is that this is 35 degrees. And in fact, if I say, okay, there's another line here, that means that this has to be what? 46 degrees, because we're looking at two transversals on top of each other. So this is transversal information, if you guys remember. Did we work on transversals? Yes, transversals. So why does law of signs come to mind? Because 
Notice the question they're giving you now, right? Let's get rid of all of that. What do they want to know? The first question is, what is the distance of the plane from point A? This is what they want to know. This is D. Because the plane is here, point A is here. So for question A, we're labeling that D for distance. What kind of situation are we really looking at? Now we know what it is. What is this? Because you got to identify that. If you don't identify the situation you're in, you're not going to know whether you use law of sines and you haven't looked at law of cosines yet, but we will. This is angle side angle. Good. How do you guys know you have angle side angle? Angle side what? Angle. So do you guys think that's important work to do, the angle side angle? It's very important. This is what's done, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you do this. Okay. So law of signs comes into play. Anybody have any questions on what we just did? We're using transversal information. Here, earlier, we used supplementary angle information, that straight line, supplementary angles. And then we used the right triangle. So this is what's going on. This is a study of triangles, ladies and gentlemen. So, okay, what can we say? Ah, what is needed? For angle side angle, don't we need another angle? What's this angle right in here? Anybody know what's that angle? How do I get that angle? Isn't that 180 minus 35 minus what? 180 minus 35 minus 46 degrees. Okay, so let's do that. And, oh, it's 99 degree angle. All right. There we go. Now we could use the law of sines. Is that right? Remember, angle side angle, you get that. I'm sorry. Yeah, angle side angle, you get the third angle. All right. Okay, folks, let's try this out. What does that mean? That means what? Sine 99 degrees over, over what? Eight. What does that equal? Sine 46 degrees over D. Does anybody remember why we do that? Because we have a, an angle and we have an opposite side. That's how law of sines works. And then you have an angle and then you have the unknown D. So we got three knowns, one unknown. That's going to allow us to solve. That is the law of signs. You guys are looking at it right there. So how do we apply it? Do you guys remember? Cross what? Multiply. D. Sine 99 is 8. Sine 46. How do you guys solve for D? Sine 99. Divide that from both sides. Okay. Cancel. And now D becomes 8. Sine 46 degrees over sine of what? 99. Let's see what D is approximately. Let's get that out, okay? And you get your TI now. Okay, TI, here we go. So here's the deal. 8 sine 46, close that, divided by sine of what? 99. What do you guys end up with? Let's go out to the nearest whole number again. I feel like in the whole number mode. 6. Was this stuff in miles? Yeah. Six miles. Okay. So 
So, ladies and gentlemen, we got six miles here. We found that distance. It's really 5.8 or something, but we're going out to the whole number. Maybe we'll go out to the tenths. I don't know. On a test, I'll tell you where to approximate probably. And ladies and gentlemen, there it is. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Right? If you remember it transversal. All right, let me erase this here because take a look. What's the next question? Do you guys see the next question? Yeah, it says find the elevation of the of the place. Jesus. Of the what? Of the plane, not the place. How do you think what what do they mean by elevation? What's the elevation again? Do you guys remember? It's a vertical line. That means this has to be 90 degrees. This is A for elevation. So the next question in B is to find the elevation. I call that A for elevation. So I'm going to get rid of this, get rid of this, and I'm going to remind you guys here. Now you have a way to find a vertical distance there, the elevation. How do you do that? Does anybody know? Do you see what I see? What do I see? Do you see a right triangle? Do you guys see a right triangle? So how do you use that right triangle now? I'm going to erase our law of science because we don't have a... You know, a lot of space. Yeah, what's the definition? Do you guys know? Sine of 35 degrees. What does that equal? Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, that's why we did that stuff. Where's that coming from? Is that me? You guys hear a noise? Sounds like email, but I don't have my email. I don't have my email on. So what is A going to be? A is sine 35 degrees, is that right? So not, A, A is uh, 6. 6 sine 35 degrees. Close that up, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, it's, uh, you know what, I, I don't feel, oh, whatever. I should have been more accurate. But we'll we'll go with this, okay? I apologize. I, I would rather have been more accurate, but it's a very crude computation. So, okay, E is about three miles if we go to the nearest whole number. On a test, I'll say like the tenths at least. Okay? So, altitude's about three miles. It's actually not, but okay. Very crude, but you guys see the point. You can now adjust your accuracy any way you like. These are all approximate. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is how we apply what we've learned. Okay, these two very, very relevant and important examples is how you apply what we've learned here. Um, height of a tree, calculating distance of a balloon, Oh, this is another one of my favorite kind of things. Here's what I'm going to do now, ladies. Um, also, let's do the height of a tree here, okay? So we didn't do this, but this is actually back from law of signs applications. This is a very important kind of question because some of you guys are going to be take, taking classes that have maybe 
some of these things. Okay? All right. Okay. So let's go through and take a look. A tree on a hill cast a shadow 200 feet down the hill. So what is the deal here, right? So you got the tree, you got the sun, and notice the difference here. Here's my shadow, okay? So let's make it darker. It's 200 feet. Here's the shadow. So a tree on a hill casts a shadow 200 feet down the hill. Notice this is not a right angle, is it? This is not like the right angle. This is now reality. You can have a tree on a hill and it casts a shadow. If the angle of inclination on the hillside measures, what, 25 degrees. Now, let's talk about this. Angle of incline measures 25 degrees. This is your incline angle. This is what they're talking about here. Okay, so I want to go through the, the information. So that heel, in order to have an incline, you need to have a horizontal, and you do. So this is defined here. This is kind of new for you guys. They gave you an angle of elevation, but there's a line there. This is why I drew the horizontal. And so what they're referencing here is that's a 25 degree angle, the angle of incline of the heel, it's inclination, right? Angle of incline measures 25 degrees. You also have an angle of what? Angle of elevation to the sun. How do you get that? How do you get an angle of elevation to the sun? Right? Remember this? They say it's 55 degrees. So what I did here is to remind you that you need a horizontal and you need the sun and you have it, the object. The eyeball is on the ground. You're looking up at the sun. So this measures, okay, with the horizontal, 55 degrees. So I want you guys to understand this here. This is 55 degrees because you need a horizontal to measure the angle. It has to be horizontal. And so that measures 55 degrees, which is why I put the picture the way it is. Okay, you guys okay with that? Okay, you guys okay with that? So notice what they're asking us for. They're asking us for the what? To read, find the height of a tree. Find the height. What's the height? The height is what? H. Sorry. So your height is over here. Here's H. So I want you guys to digest that, chew on that, see what's going on with that, okay? Because you're going to have to find the height of a tree here, and, you know, you're going to have to use some skills to do that. Okay? So what I'm going to do here for you guys is this. I'm going to draw another picture of a triangle. so that you can hopefully see this is your situation. This is what you guys see that you have so far. Is that right? You got a height, you got that distance 200. 
And that's what you're looking for. Okay, you guys okay with that? Now, I think you need some angles. Don't you need some angles? So how are you going to find some angles? Yeah, you're going to need some angles, right? So I make the claim. You know what angle I think you could get? You guys can get this angle here and that angle here. So let me, let me go back again. I'm going to make the claim. You guys can get this angle and this angle. What are the key ideas you got to remember? What's the word I want to use? You're going to think about a what? Trans what? Reversals. Key. So you might go, what are you talking about? Well, there's a line here. We'll call that line one. And there's a line over here. We'll call this line two. And then you go, what's going on? Well, you got another line if I can get it there, hopefully. Now. Okay, you guys okay with that? And I'm going to do even this. I'm going to say you even have another line here, maybe. If I can kind of draw it. Let me change the color. And I'll call that, well, we can say this here is line maybe three. And this will be line four. And there's various ways to do this. So can I ask you guys a question? Focus on this one. Maybe this was something you could get right away. If I know this is a 25 degree angle here. This is 25 degrees. Is that true? You guys with me on that? That's 25 degrees. And then what's what angle is here? This is what? Isn't that a right angle, 90 degrees? So take a look. I'm saying this is in blue. Those are vertical angles. Are opposite angles, doesn't that measure 25 degrees? So there's 25 degrees. Those are vertical angles. 25 degrees plus 90 degrees is going to give you what? What's this angle here? All right? This is going to be now 100 and, well, let's find out. This is 25 degrees plus 90 degrees, which is 115 degrees. Okay, so remember, in blue, 25 degrees. Opposite angles, 25 plus 90 is 115. In fact, what else do I know? That this here, because of a transversal, this is also what? 25 degrees. And that makes this angle also what? 25 degrees. Let me put that line there. So in blue, that 25 degree angle, the angle of incline is being used here. So you know, I don't know if I can make that there, clear 25. This is 25. So what does that mean about my triangle here? Right? I can now get this angle over here as well. And I'm not sure what color, but I want you guys to know that if this whole thing is 
55 degrees, and this portion in blue is 25, what does that mean this has to be? This has to be what? 30 degrees. You say, how did you get that? Well, the angle of incline for the sun is 55 degrees minus the angle, sorry, angle of the sun, angle of elevation is 55. Angle of incline was 25. So this is how we got the 30 degrees right in here. That 55 degrees minus 25 degrees. So that's going to give you 30 degrees. And so guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You should be very happy. You say, why are you guys happy with this? What kind of triangle are you guys looking at now? Right? This is going to be, be what? Angle, side, what? Angle. So for angle, side, angle, what's the story? Is that law of sines or law of cosines? It's law of? I wish I had my sound effects. Is there anybody at home that knows? Is this law of sines or law of cosines? Which one is this? Law of what? Is that law of sines or law of cosines? Which one is that going to be? Remember, you don't start working on applications. You start working on law of sines first, law of cosines. And if you don't know which to use, then you need to start working on that. Because your test day is coming, and ladies and gentlemen, we test you. It's the way it is. Thank you. Law of what? Signs. Good job. So remember, if you have, what, two angles, are you going to get a third angle? How do you handle this situation, right? This situation is handled how? By law of sides. you got to get now the third angle. So what's your third angle? 180 minus the 30 minus 115. So that's 180 minus 145. What's 180 minus 145? What's that going to be? What is it? 35 degrees. Now you say, why do I need this? Because law of signs now is applied. What do you guys get from law of signs? This is going to be what again? Sine of what? 30 degrees over... Remember this, sine of 30 over H, okay, is going to equal what? What's that going to equal? Sine of 35 over, here's sine 35 over what? 200. Okay, so this is your law of science question. Now, what happens now, ladies and gentlemen? You're going to do what? Cross multiply, and you're going to end up with what? 200 sine 30 is H sine 35. And I'm going to need to do, I'm going to need some space, okay? So what I'm going to do now here is this. Let's get some space. Double check to see if my work is okay. I'm going to need some space. I'm going to put it up here. Now, divide both sides now by what? What do you guys divide both sides by? Right, sine of 35 degrees. And you get cancellation. So H is going to be 200 sine 30 degrees over what? Sine 35 degrees. So what is H going to be?
Okay, what do you guys get? We're gonna we're gonna try that out. And let me go back here if I can find it. What is this gonna be? Two hundred times sine thirty. Close that. Divided by sine thirty-five, and you end up with what is H? One hundred seventy-four point three. Is that right? All right. Good job. Here you go. And is that in feet? That's in feet. So, ladies and gentlemen, you found the height of the tree. I guess that was green here. So, this is using law of signs applications. But the point I want you guys to know is... You need to identify what's the situation. Angle, side, angle is law of sines. Side, angle, sine, uh, angle, SAS is law of cosines. So that is another, that's the height of tree example. Okay. Now we have a very similar kind of question because now we're on a hill and this is more real now. Right, we call right angle trig, which is really geometry. Okay, right angle trig, which is really geometry, um, ladies and gentlemen, is limiting because you can now have a hill. You could be on a hill. Remember, the right angle just means you have a horizontal ground. It's flat, and that happens. But you also have hill situations. So let's read this here, because this is important, right? This is calculating distance, observers P at, at P and Q. So in other words, you got eyeballs, okay? At This is where point P is, and this is where point Q is. You got some eyeballs there. P, Q, your eyeballs are here. There it is, P and Q, on a hill now. So what do they measure? Observers at PQ located on the side of a hill that is inclined. This is a hill incline again. Oh, you got an inclined hill, 28 degree incline. Where did they reference that? Do you guys know? That's right here. So let's kind of be careful here. And I want you guys to really understand this here. Because like I said, where you guys go in the courses you take, are important because you're now taking a prerequisite for other courses that need trig. And so they expect you to understand some of these things. So just to kind of remark, um, this is a line, this is a horizontal. And in fact, this is another line. So I can say L1, L2, L3, where all of these lines are parallel, okay? They never, they never cross. So the incline of a hill is just how steep it is. So you're going to say, do you mean they're measuring, I'm going to put another line if you want to call that L4. Has to be a line though. So in some sense here, this is not, this is a fourth line and it's not parallel, but this is the essence of the incline of a hill, okay? So you guys know, these are some things that you may not know what we gotta talk about, right? This is why I'm talking about it. This is an incline, 28 degree incline hill. This is important for you guys. All right, you guys okay with that? It's the definition of it. So you have a hill that's on an incline, okay. Um. What else is going on here, right? So you made two, um, they're gonna say now here, the observer at P now, so you now have an observer at P, has the angle of elevation of the hot air balloon. So it's gonna be 62 degrees. So at P, you might say, what's the angle of elevation? Well, notice what I did. 62 degrees here, the observer at P, but how do you find really that angle? You're looking at here, you're at P, and you're looking at the balloon here, okay? 
And that means you need a horizontal. The definition, remember, is right in here. That You need the horizontal. This is why they gave you that horizontal here. This is for that angle of elevation for P, right? For the balloon here. So hopefully you guys see that. That's the point. And if you read further, they're going to say what? At the same instant, another observer at Q, okay, measures the angle of elevation to be what? 72. So you go, where, where is that? Okay, now you're at Q here. There's an observer here. Looking at the balloon. You go, okay, they're both looking at the balloon. So you go, well, what's the 72 degrees? Why did you put it right in there? Because again, you need a horizontal. And this is why there's two horizontals here. Okay? So this is a horizontal for the next point right in here. That's why I put it down there. Easy breezy, lemon squeezy. You guys see my point? I'm just using definitions of angle of elevation. And then now you know what an incline is. But you need a horizontal. So this is why you have these horizontal lines. And some books, like you might see in your future, they may not draw those nice horizontal lines. You have to draw them yourself. So sometimes some of these questions don't even have all those horizontal lines like I drew for you guys. But you need them to define angles. Angle of incline, angle of elevation, right? So P and Q. Now you go, what is going on with P and Q? Well, if P is 50 meters downhill from Q, so P is downhill. Okay, we did put P is downhill. And what else do we do? We're saying that this distance is 50 meters, right? You with me on that? So I'm going to, yet again, if you guys can see this, they're going to want to know what? Find the distance from Q to the balloon. So what are they asking? Find the distance from Q to the balloon. So if Q's here and the balloon's here, they're trying to find what? This is what, what they're asking. Okay, find the distance from Q to the balloon. Now, what I'm going to do here for you guys is this. I'm going to draw again another triangle. And that's kind of what it really looks like maybe. This is what they're saying is D. Is that right? This is 50 meters. I'm going to make another claim, ladies and gentlemen. You know what claim I'm going to make? Can you guys find some angles? Like maybe this angle here and this angle here in this picture? Here's what I'm saying. Maybe you can find that. Maybe, again, you're going to have an angle, side angle situation. Maybe, again, I suspect. I know one thing, how do I use the angle of incline information here? Right? How do I use that? You see this portion right here? 
I'm going to put this in red. What angle is this angle right here? Because that's the first angle I can get. How do I know? You see the 25 degree angle? I'm sorry, 28 degree. See this 28 degree angle? Isn't that angle, that's the angle of incline. Isn't that right here too? 25 degrees? Isn't that the same? That should be the same, is that right? You say why, because I'm gonna to say to you guys, L2 and L1 are parallel. So we can find that angle if we take what? The 62 degrees minus the angle of incline of 28, because that angle of incline is right in here. Let me see if I can get the blue. That angle is 25, 20, 28 degrees. So the total, 62 minus 28, what is 62 minus 28? Right? Do you guys remember? So you're going to get that 62 minus that 28 degree angle. And what does that give you? 34 degrees? There's 34 degrees. So I have one angle here. This is that 34 degrees. Let me write a nicer four. And then I'm going to ask you guys this question here. How do I get this angle now? Like I'm saying, here's where we're at. How do I get that angle? Can I get that angle? I think I can. Can I, can I mention something to you guys here? Let me see if I can get rid of this highlighter, okay? Can I say to you guys that, what? Let's get rid of that. I wanna keep this green though. This whole thing's 72. Can I ask you guys, let me find another color. What is this angle? Anybody know what that angle is? What should that angle be? I'm talking in gold or brown. What do you guys think? Is it 118? How do you know it's 118? Yes, isn't that what? Straight angle? 180 minus what? 72. There's your straight angle of one. It's 108, I guess. Is that right? So I guess it's 108. Be careful. So that's 108. Is that right? You guys okay with that? Let's see if you can get the picture. Isn't there a straight angle? You're using that red line, that horizontal? Okay, you guys know what I'm saying? You got a straight angle here. Supplementary angles. It's going back to geometry, those stuff we did the first week. That's why we spent some of that time giving you guys those definitions. And then notice this. I make the claim, ladies and gentlemen, that you guys know this angle as well. Because why? That angle is the same as this angle. Is that true? Aren't those vertical angles or opposite angles? What angle did I color in blue? It's also right here. It's also where? You guys know what angle that is? What angle is that? You see this 28 degrees? Isn't this also 28? That's your 28 degrees. Isn't that the angle of incline? 
So this is the angle of incline because they're vertical angles. Is that true? Yes. So if I know that, okay, here's what I'm saying to you guys. You can get this because you have 28 degrees plus the 108 degrees there. You're using the angle of incline. This is also what? 28 degrees because the lines are parallel. Al3, or actually, yeah, Al3 is parallel to what? Your Al1. All three lines are parallel. So this angle is going to be now, what is that? One, is that 136 degrees? 136. And I guess I colored them red, but let's do that. So like I said, we can get that using vertical angles and transversals, just opposite angles and transversals. And now you have what we're saying, angle, side, angle. And again, what do we say? If you don't know what angle, side, angle is, you don't know what to apply. So angle, side, angle, this is law of what? Signs. But you have to always start by doing what? I'm going to get rid of this. You're going to get that third angle to use law of signs. So what is that third angle? Do you guys know? Isn't that third angle going to be, we're looking at this, 180 minus the 34 minus the 136? So we're going to do this. 180 minus 34 minus 36, because the sum has to be 180. And I think that's 136. And what do you get? This measures what? 10 degrees, ladies and gentlemen. Is that true? So 180 minus 34 minus 36. And what you guys now have is what? So, yes, let's get rid of that here. So, ladies and gentlemen, you now have all the information you need for law of what? Law of signs. You can now get, get what you need, meaning we know what? Sine 34 over D is going to be what? Sine 10 degrees over 50. These two are opposite. That's what you're using. These two are opposite, and that's what you're using. Right? So now, what do you guys do? Cross what? Cross multiply, and you get what? 50 sine 34 degrees becomes D times sine 10 degrees. Divide both sides by D. D is going to be what? 50 sine 34 degrees divided by sine of 10 degrees. We're going to see what D gives you. Okay, we'll see what D gets. So let's try this out in the TI. Fifty sine of what? Thirty-four divided by sine of ten, and you get now what? Hundred sixty-one point. Actually zero. Right. If you go to the nearest tenths, the zero is in the tenths position. Digit to the right to one. So your D is 161. So this is what they're asking here. I guess it was purple. 161 uh, meters is that distance there. Okay, you guys okay with that one? And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. So this is what they're asking. The distance from point Q 
to the balloon. I can't get that. There you guys go. So now I would say to you guys, um, hmm. Just thinking of something that can be maybe done. Angle. Yeah, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. So we have completed what I would say to you guys. We did this too. We did all these. Notice I did do a nicer version, like I said. There's no chicken scratch like I had before. So I did update this particular no chicken scratch. We did all of these here. I will actually uh, edit a video here that has all these pieces of information. We did this yesterday, um, but we did it with the other worksheet. We have a cleaner one today, but I wanted to go back and find that error we had yesterday so we can be complete. And so ladies and gentlemen, yes, thank you. We are what? We are done. Is that right? Anybody okay with that? Anybody have any questions on these here? What do you think the, the big lesson is? What skill sets do you have to know to do these? Number one, you got to know law signs, law cosines. Number two, you got to remember the transversals and supplementary angles, even complementary angles. Just those two things, okay? After that, you got to focus on the language, like you maybe learn new today, angle of incline. The language of angle of elevation. All of these require what? Trend, they, they require horizontals. So this is why in my sheets, I put that there. But in your book, do they draw the nice horizontals like I did? No. You guys see what I'm saying? So how I look at my examples is really, ladies and gentlemen, preparation for how you do your homework. That's how it should work. So my examples are really that preparation for the homework. Your homework is not going to draw the nice horizontals like I did. But I want you guys to know they're there. Even though they don't draw them for you. If you ever have an angle of incline, you need a horizontal. Angle of elevations, horizontal. Angle of what? Depression, they all need these things. I'm even going to label that horizontals. Doesn't let me. Man, doesn't let me write. So if I can't write, I guess we have to go home. So all of them need these horizontal lines here. So that might be something that you guys didn't know or realize. So I just saved that at the very end here, but these are really uh, law cosine, law sign applications. And that's why you might see it in the law sign application homework. And you'll see these others, like starting here, calculating distance, those are law cosine applications. Navigation, typically law cosines. So reckoning, dead reckoning. Um, and like we did, those are, those are law cosine applications. So you now are able to do your homework on law signs, law cosines, and applications. Remember, I did give you guys some extra credit. The reason I did that is because hopefully some people get motivated to do their what? Their homework. And that people understand that this is the essence of why you're here. This is trigonometry. Yes, you use some what? Algebra. And yes, you use some geometry. But you do use those things. And this is how you use them. So hopefully you guys are good. All right. You guys okay with that? All right. Now you guys can go home and get started on your... Hopefully you get finished on your... Not started. Get finished on your what? Homework, law signs, law cosines. We'll see you guys tomorrow.
that this audio is there. Got to double check. Okay, the audio is there. And ladies and gentlemen, okay, so welcome back. We got a good, a good day of log cosines again today. So if you said, wow, wonderful log cosines. Now remember, this stuff isn't going to go away, whether it's log signs or log cosines, it doesn't go away. Now, I say that to you, so hopefully it's something you embrace. Um, think of it this way. You're going to go away before law of signs goes away, you know, or law of cosines goes away. So it's here to stay. And these are some fundamental ideas that are very, very, very good at having you do some applications. Applications are the name of the game. Now, I know it. sometimes it's kind of scary because you go, oh, my God, these are word problems. These are problems with words, right? Um, so I understand that because when I was a student, I was so apprehensive about taking like physics Physics one, and I was like, oh my God, that's all word problems. Everything's a word problem. So, you know, I, I understand that apprehension because I used to have it. But, you know, when you work on the math behind it and you know the math behind it, meaning you knew the law of cosines we worked on yesterday, when you, ha when you approach a word problem, then you just focus now on the language because you can't do it both. In other words, it's done in, in steps, meaning... Um, you first learn the math and then you learn the what language, that's how it works. And then you become successful. And I'll tell you guys, it's kind of an interesting story. I became such a good student in physics where I would get hundred percent of my physics tests. And you say, how did you do that? And the world thought I was a genius. I was no genius. It's because I did the math and then I did the what language. I didn't try to do it at the same time, you know? It's kind of like thinking, how do you change a flat tire? Do you do it while it's moving? While the car is moving? Do you guys understand what I mean? You can't change a flat tire while the car is moving. You got to change. You got to stop the car and then you change the tire, right? So that's kind of the idea. So you can do it. People, people have. If I can do it, I think anybody can do it. But you still have to go through the what? The steps, right? So hopefully, again, you, you worked on some of those things. You don't want to wait to the night before. It doesn't work that way. So what I'm going to share with you guys here is some of these application questions on how to calculate distance. Okay? So let's start by that, and let's take a look at that, and let's see. What does it say? It says calculating distance, and here's what this is. This is under the law of cosines. Now, when you read this, we see two straight roads diverge at an angle of 75 degrees. Now, when you kind of read that, in all honesty, for me, when I first read that kind of statement, I didn't even know what they're talking about. What are they talking about, right? Two straight roads diverge. Well, what, there's, what they mean by that is that this is a straight line. This is a straight line. And it's not the same straight line. So, you know, that's all they're saying. So when you read that, they go, oh, you know, you got two straight roads. They're diverging. They're like going away from each other. That's kind of the meaning of that word diverge. And then as a consequence of diverging, what does it say here? They give you this angle of what? 75 degrees. Okay. So you go, okay. The roads are going away from each other. That's what it means to diverge, and it creates an angle, right? So that first sentence, yeah, you want to focus on the language. You know, it's kind of interesting to me that, you know, when I talk to people and I talk to other instructors, whether it's, you know, any environment that I'm in, I, I remind them, because I teach other, other classes, how important language is to go through the language. It's extremely important. Language is, is, is very important. How to communicate is important. You know? So two cars leave an intersection at 2 p.m. And you go, okay. So they're first talking about the, the road. That's the road in blue. Now they're saying, okay, two cars leave at an intersection. And this is the intersection right here. So if I had to go back and and rewrite that, I might have just put intersection. So there's your intersection. And two cars are leaving at 2 p.m. 
You might say, why do they care about that? Well, we'll see. One is traveling at 55 miles per hour. And I'm going to call that, um, you know, what you call that could be different things, right? I mean, C1 for car one, um, I don't know, X, Y, whatever, A, B. In this picture, looks like I might have called it A. And maybe B, I don't know, okay? But let's see if we can figure something out, right? One is traveling at 55 miles per hour, and the other is traveling at 72, right? So there's two cars, miles per hour. How far are the cars apart at 4.30 p.m., right? A classic question, ladies and gentlemen, of law cosines. Let me share with you guys why. If I ask you guys this common sense kind of question, right? If, if one car is faster than the other and they're traveling, do you guys know the distance formula? What's the distance formula? You guys know the distance formula? This is an extremely important formula. Distance equals rate times time. Okay? That's an extremely important formula. Distance is rate times time. So, one line is longer than the other. Would you guys agree with that? A, B. So, what do you think... What do you think then I should say? Well, how do we figure out which which is which? You guys know what 55 represents? This 55 miles per hour? You guys know what the 72 miles per hour represents? What does that represent? That's your rate. Distance is rate times time. It's your speed, right? And if the time of this situation starts where at 2 p.m. and it ends at 4 30 p.m. right what's your time value what's that what's that time if you started at 2 and you ended at 4 30 how long have you been traveling do you guys know how much would you guys say that's two and a half hours? What do you guys think? 2.5 hours? Does that make sense? 2 to 4.30, that's two and a half hours, right? Later. From 2 to 3 is one hour. From 3 to 4 is two hours, 30 minutes. So, ladies and gentlemen, where's your time? So I want to remark to you guys that the units have to be the same, miles per hour and hour. And so now we can figure out the distance here, okay? So for one car, we know the rate is 55 times 2.5. The other car is what? 72 times 2.5, is that right? Which one do you think is going to be A? Which one do you think is going to be B? Which, which line is longer, A or B? B. So this has to be B and this has to be A. Is that true? Do you guys see the point? See, think of, think of that distance formula here, D is RT. Think of that as a ruler. That's how I think about it. It's a ruler. Distance is rate times time. So now let's wake up the TI. Okay. So now we have what? 55 times 2.5. And what do you get? 137.5.
72 times 2.5. What do you got? 180. So A then is going to measure what? What's that distance there, right? For A, 137.5. Is that right? And of course, that's in miles. And then B is 180 what? Miles. So what I want to go back and share with you guys is this kind of stuff here. Okay? Calculating distance. So what we found is distance here. It's a classic question. These, are, these questions are classic. These are what we call bread and butter. You go, what do you mean? What's bread and butter? If you're taking law sines, law cosines, working on an application, these are the kind of questions that are like your, your meal, bread and butter, right? It's a staple. Now, notice what I did here, okay? How I've expressed to you guys law of cosines. What you're seeing is a side angle side situation, right? That's an extremely important detail. Side angle what? Side. You guys with me on that? So, what do you think this becomes by law of cosines, ladies and gentlemen? Do you guys remember this? What is the law of cosines without me going back and taking a look at it? You see that, you see that distance, that letter D? Because that's what they're asking. How far are the cars apart at 430? They're asking for this distance D here. And maybe we should use another color. Let's use another color. I, I used red yesterday for it. But here's the thing. This is why you guys want to get started on that fundamental thing. We can always find D very easily. This is, for me, the classic law of cosine scenario. It's classic. So remember, I gave you guys a bunch of formulas there. We wrote it down. Do you guys print out the notes for yourself by any chance? Maybe. At least write them down. It's a good thing to do. How have I been approaching law of cosines? How do you guys think I've been doing that? What do you do? You start with that D squared. This is always about finding that opposite distance to the angle, right? And then how do I think of it? What do I say? Do you guys remember? I say things, think of what? Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine now of that 70. Well, cosine, really, I'm changing the letter on you, but I want you guys to see my point. I called that big D, but you guys know big D is really 75 degrees. Is that right? You guys, you guys see that it's the opposite angle. So if I know the sides, and I do, I don't even care what letter they represent, really. I just care about the values. So what is D? 
D, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the square root. Is that right? Now I can solve for D by the square root formula. There we go. So go to your calculator. Second square root, here's the deal. What is this? 137.5 squared plus 180 squared minus two times 137.5 times 180 times cosine of 75 degrees. You guys okay with that one? And what do you guys get there? What's your distance? Let's go out to the nearest tenths again. Let's be a little bit more accurate because going out to whole numbers is kind of not as accurate. 196.2, and what are the units? Remember those science instructors Woo! They want units. Math instructors, you know, we don't really care if you put units as long as you know it's a distance. But those science instructors, I'll tell you, they will be livid if you don't put the units. So I'll, I'll help them out and prepare you guys for that. So this, this, is, a, this is your distance, ladies and gentlemen. And again, for me, it's a classic law, law cosines question. Side, angle, side. Find the opposite side. All right, what do you guys think? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah there you go. Calculating distance, ladies and gentlemen. So that's a classic question. So I'm kind of introducing to you guys, you know, if you even look in your book, for example, and I'm going to go back to, where are we at? Law of cosines on my sheets here. Look at this. You know, just to kind of take out a law of cosines scenario. Let's go to the book. All right, let's go here. Two forty one. And oh, we go here. We go. <laughs> this kind of always takes some time, but oh, today it did a little bit. It was a little quick. Here's my point. Where was it? Where's the one? Yeah, we got to talk about some of this stuff. This is good stuff. Uh, Well, area of a parking lot. Yeah, no. Where was the example? I just want to kind of, we're going to get here for heading and bearing, but ladies and gentlemen, um, there we go. Length of a tunnel, you know. It's another classic law of cosine questions, meaning they're going to give you side angle side. And they're going to ask you for the distance of the opposite side. Classic, classic, classic. You know, they go, tunnel is built. So this is, a, a, what I did is analogous to all of these kind of questions. But let's look in the book here. And let's find something to kind of look at, which I think is good. You know, even looking at, uh, where are we at, 30? No, they, they, the book goes up here. How about this, like, 37. Now, it's important to me, ladies and gentlemen, it's extremely important to me that when you go to those classes, like maybe a surveying class, right? Because this is what you guys are majoring in. You know, you want to major in things like this. You maybe want to major in that's going to have you a civil engineering course or an engineering course or just some other science course that involves surveying. You should show up there knowing what to do. Because 
that's what you're going to cover. They're going to cover this stuff. And, you know, going to those classes with you not knowing how to do that is like blasphemy. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is if we just look at number 37, I'm going to change that on you guys, right? Look at the picture. Didn't they give you side angle side? So they're going to always ask you for an opposite distance for side angle side for, for things like log cosines. And they're going to say, find the distance across a small lake. A surveyor has taken the following measurements. So you can take some measurements here. Find the distance across the lake using the information. Now, I'm going to change this on you. Because I don't want to take all the fun away. Okay? And I'm going to use the same letters even, B, A, and C. But, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to change some things on you. You guys can see what I'm saying when I actually show this to you. But, you know, they, they didn't even use a lot of language. They just said find the distance across the lake. They just drew a triangle with letters, and then they just drew there for, like, number 37, I'm saying. And then they just told you, hey, find that distance. So, anyway, whatever. That's the same as what I'm looking at here. But I changed some things. Okay? And the distance they're talking about here again, using the colors of this day, is over here. So, in other words... I want you to find D. And what kind of situation are you in? Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. So, okay, again, what do we want to do? You guys remember? Think of it this way. Here's what I do, right? D squared, what is D squared equal? Do I really need to put the letters? I don't. I don't put the letters, right? You know what I do? I say, okay, it's the side squared plus the other side squared minus two times the product of the sides, right? And then cosine of what? 42 degrees. What do you guys think of that? Do you guys see my point? I'm using how I described how to memorize this without even memorizing a formula, really. How to go approach it. Now, you're not going to master it unless you practice it. So you can't just go, oh, you know, if you need the letters and put the letters, but you got to practice it. And then you say, well, how do I get D? Well, that's taking the square root. So you take the square root of this. So, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's enter this in our calculator. What do we do, right? Square root again. Remember, 
You take the leg squared, 3.6 squared, you add it with your what? 4.5 squared minus two times 3.6 times 4.5 times cosine of what angle? 42 degrees, and ladies and gentlemen, what do you end up with? What's that distance in this example? Let's again go to the nearest tenths. What's that to the nearest tenths? Do you guys know? Zero is in the tenths position. A digit to the right is a two. What does that mean? Do you guys remember? Yeah, it's uh, keep the zero. In other words, don't add one to the zero. When do you add one? If the digit to the right of the place value is a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, right? So here you go, 3.0. So this is 3.0. Uh, no, not miles. That's in what feet? So ladies and gentlemen, this is classic law of cosines applications. Easy breezy, side angle side, you know, very classic. What do you guys think? Is that, is that impossible? No, it's really being trained in all honesty. If you ever want to get, is anybody here good at anything? I'm just curious what you're good at. What are you guys good at? You gotta be good at something. You good at anything? What do you guys think? Anybody? Anybody good at something? Nothing? Well, maybe. You're not good at anything? I had this conversation with my daughter. I remember I said to my daughter, I, I wanted my daughter to play sports. And she liked playing sports. She was, she was, she, she was, she liked playing. But she didn't want to get into organized sports. She didn't want to, I wanted to play volleyball in high school, right? Because she liked playing volleyball. She just I said, Ashley, why don't you, why don't you play volleyball? You know, why don't you try for the volleyball team? Why don't you try to focus on that, right? She says, no, dad. Well, why not? Because I'm not very good at it. So, well, how do you think you get good? You get good by practicing. That's the only way you get good at anything. See, there's an assumption that people have natural ability and they're just good and they excel. And because they're good at something, that's the assumption. But the truth is, that's not really the case necessarily at all. Maybe you have some natural ability. Maybe you... You, you have some inclination, but that doesn't mean you're going to be good. The only way you get good is by what? Practice. Now, how did I learn this? I'll tell you. I played organized sports. I was very good at baseball. I didn't start out that way, but I practiced every day. I got very good. But I'm too small. Nobody cared about small baseball players. They only care about the tall guys. It's the truth. That's why you see baseball players, six foot two, six foot one, six four. You don't see very many Mookie Betts out there. Although Mookie Betts is more athletic than any of these guys. So anyway, so how do you get good? You practice. Where did I learn that? I remember watching, there's a basketball player by the name of Magic Johnson, and I was a kid. And I remember somebody asked Magic Johnson, how did you get so good at free throws because he had an amazing free throw rate. He'd always try to get the ball and get you to foul him so he can get some points by doing free throws. But you got to be good at free throws. So how do you get so good? Do you guys know what he said? Every morning when he wakes up, he does 100 free throws. Every morning. Before he does anything, he does 100 free throws. Before he brushes his teeth, 100 free throws. And I, that was shocking to me. I thought, uh, but you're Magic Johnson. That's why they call you Magic. I thought you're born with all that natural ability. You could do this stuff. Mm -mm. He had to work and practice. He may have had the height. He may have had all those other gifts. But he still had to practice a lot. And he became great. So that said something to me. Hmm. If I want to get good at word problems, if I want to get good at math, 
I'm going to practice. I have to. So that's what I did. And it worked. So you're not born with natural ability. You may have a little bit of it, but it comes through practice. It's the only way to do it. So if you don't practice, you're not going to get there. So don't get mad at yourself if you say, hey, you know, I can't do something. I haven't been successful. If you didn't practice, that's the reason. Don't tell yourself anything else. It's because you just didn't practice. If you practice, you would be good. That's it. And so that's going to help you get good at anything you want to do, but you got to want to do it. And so I wish my own daughter would have said, ah, taking my advice and just practice volleyball because she didn't want to play, but she just, but that's what a lot of people do. I've seen that in a lot of people. They're too afraid. They're just afraid. And that's kind of sad if you walk around this, this planet your whole life afraid of everything. That's sad. That, to me, is heartbreaking. Notice that. Take a look around. Take a look around people you know. You might see they're just too afraid. Too afraid of being successful. And that's, to me, that's heartbreaking. But if you practice, you'll get good at anything. And there's some things even now for me I want to get good at, but I have to practice. So let's take a look at some more of these applications here. Mm. Oh, another classic question. Man, I'm glad I made this stuff. Do you guys know this is a classic question too? The, the, the mountain question. So let's go through and let's read this. Let's do this classic question. A man walks toward a mountain along a flat surface. And even when I've read this, I remember as a student going, what does it mean a flat surface? You know, all they're saying is that this is a straight line. You know, that's all they want to communicate. You go, okay, a man, it could be a woman, doesn't have to be a man. Walking toward, because the mountain is over here, right? So you're walking toward the mountain along a flat surface, straight line, and measures what? An angle of elevation to be 32 degrees. So if the person is walking toward the mountain, remember the definition of angle of elevation? You guys remember I, I said that to you? I make a, a reference to it. 32 degree angle of elevation? So somehow... And this is kind of a weird thing. Remember, the eyeball's on the ground. Remember, you have to have an object, and if it's elevated, it's up. So this is, where, this is what they're talking about. You're talking at the top of the mountain. There's the object in some sense. So, yes, even though the man is walking and his eyeballs are probably five feet tall, that's what they're pretending that angle of elevation is 32 degrees if the person was on the floor there looking at the top. So remember, that's the definition where this flat surface is that horizontal. Because remember, that's, there's a definition there. This is the horizontal. And then they say, what does he do? He proceeds to walk another what? 200 meters. There's your what? 200 meters. And then what happens? They measure another what? Angle of elevation. And what is that going to measure? What's going to measure now? 38 degrees. So the eyeball again is down here. And remember... It's an angle of elevation, and it's to the top of the mountain. And that's kind of what an angle of elevation is. You have to have an object that you're looking at to measure that angle. And then what's the next question, ladies and gentlemen? What do you think that next question is? What are they asking? How tall is the what? Is the mountain? You know, if somebody asks you how tall you are, 
How do you measure height? Think about this. It's a, it, it's, it may not see, it is a big deal. If they ask you how tall you are, how do they measure? I wish I had my sound effects. God, I missed that. I gotta, I gotta. I'm gonna put a to-do list together. I got things to do today. Where's my? <sighs> Let me get out my phone. If I try to forget, you know. It's funny. I ran into my colleague. I'm going to get my coffee. He says, where are you going? I go, I've got to get my coffee. I always forget. He goes, so do I. I forget all the time. I said, oh, my God. I thought it was just me. I thought it was just me getting old. Here's my to-do list. To-do. Sound effects. Uh, send. Letter. Of wreck. Uh. Jesus. All right. Got like five things on my list. How do you measure height, ladies and gentlemen? Height is always measured how? Here's my point. Vertically. Hmm. It's not vertical. Vertically is how you measure height. And that makes this a what? A right angle. Now, maybe you might say, hey, your ground is maybe over here. Can we put the ground over here this way, right? So here's a picture. Now, I titled this worksheet Law of Signs, Law of Cosine Applications because I decided when I created it, when, I, when I've done this and if you get into other classes, I've decided, you know what we're going to do? do? I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to talk about Law of Signs, Law of Cosines, and I'm going to do some applications of it. But I did a little differently. I did, did Law of Signs and then did some applications. Now I did a little Law of Cosines and now do some applications. So. What I want to remark to you guys is how do you go about finding the height? Because that's what they're asking, the height of a mountain. This is a classic mountain question. Every trick class should have that example that you take. In the world, anybody take trig in high school? The coach have the mountain question? Oh, my God. Did coach take trig? Probably not. Shouldn't there be a law against that stuff? Should you go, should you be able to go to a doctor that didn't go to medical school? Should you go to a dentist who didn't ever go to a dental school? What do you guys think? Should you get on a ride at Disneyland created by a person who was never an engineer? Should you take counseling advice from a counselor who never took courses in that subject? Oh, Mr. Judge, you're, you're being mean. Should you listen to people who never did these things before? Mm. Should you take photography from an instructor who never took a picture in their life? Uh, it makes too much sense. Anyway, what's my point? Does that look straight to you guys? Does that look vertical? I don't know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, here's the deal. How would you guys approach this? Why is this coming after law of cosines? Why do you think I put it under the law of cosine situation? Anybody have an idea? They want us to find the height. Didn't I get through saying to you guys, side, angle, side. Is law of cosines. Here's what I'm going to say to you guys. You know how you do this? 
You can do it in steps. You're first going to have to find length what? D. How do you think you do that? Do you have side angle side? Oh, maybe we, maybe it isn't log cosines. Oh, it's not law of cosines. I apologize. I haven't had my coffee. Angle side angle. You still probably need to get D anyway. You don't have to get D, but you can. How? Why do I say it's not law of, co, uh, law of cosines, but law of sines here? Anybody know? Do I have? Yes. Yes, you can. You could get this angle right in here. You say, how is that? Isn't that 180 minus what? 38 degrees. And what's that going to give you? Anybody know what that is? Isn't this 142? Yes, it is. Outstanding. Bless you. And you have what? Angle, side, angle, ladies and gentlemen. Angle, side, angle. Isn't that going to give you D? I think so. Let's figure this out. Okay. Angle, side, angle. Once you know that this is 100, and, and let me double check because I haven't had my coffee. So I've never, I, maybe I shouldn't do my arithmetic in my head this morning until I've had a full cup. 180 minus 38 degrees because it's supplementary angles. It is 142. Now, you know what I'm going to do? 180 minus what? 32 minus 142 is going to be 6 degrees. Does anybody want to tell me why did I do that? Why am I doing that? Because when if you're ever under angle side angle, what could you always do? You got two angles. You get the third angle. Those two A's represent angle. The sum of three angles is 180 in a triangle. So this here, and I'm going to have to start to erase, but this here measures what? Six degrees. Okay, you guys okay with that? So good. So what that now means, let me go back and do something like this and say to you guys, so you can see this here, that you got the angle side, um, angle side, angle situation. So let's see what law of sine says, because this is under the application for both law of sines and law of cosines. Um, isn't that sine of what? What do I know? Sine of six degrees right over what number from law, law of sines sine of six degrees over 200 what does that equal number opposite six degrees over 200 what does that equal that equals what sine of 32 degrees over what over d Cross multiply. You guys okay with that? What do you get now? D. Sine six degrees becomes what? 200 sine 32. And when you solve for that letter D, right? Divide both sides by sine six, right? So you get D going to be what? 200 sine 32 degrees over... Sine of six degrees.
So let's see what D will be. Okay, let's get out our let's get out our calculator. So we're gonna get this D now, ladies and gentlemen. So let's see. 200 sine of what? 32 divided by sine of what? Six. And what do you get? What is that equal? Do you guys, do you guys get this here? One thousand thirteen point nine feet. Is that right? So that is that distance we call D. Okay, but that's not the height of the mountain, is it? What you guys found? Oops. Bless you. It's all right. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? What are you guys looking at now? Here's what I want you guys to see now. You found that D, that distance. Why is that distance good? Why do we need that? Because what are you looking at now? What is that? To get the height of the mountain, isn't that a right triangle? That's the whole idea. So you got, you got that two-step kind of situation where you have to use law signs, and then you could get the height of the mountain. Now, you're going to have to know about a trig ratio. It's really geometry, right? So what is that? Do you guys know? What's opposite over hypotenuse? Right? Because you have 38 degrees. Isn't that the angle you have? You have 38 degrees there. So what's the deal? What's the right? That's why I give you guys that work to do on right triangles. What's the deal? Because I knew where we're headed. So I think, what, what ratio is that? What's opposite of an angle? Because here's the angle. Opposite over hypotenuse. Isn't that sine? Sine 38 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse 132.9. So that means H will be, solving for H, sine 38. So we get 1,013.9 sine of what? 38 degrees. What's this going to give you now? What's the height of the mountain? 624.2 feet. Okay? 624.2 feet. So ladies and gentlemen... That's what H is. That's the height of your mountain. That's the classic mountain question. Very classic. Okay? So again, if you take any trig course, they should have you do that. The mountain question. All right. What do you guys think? Not bad? How about this? This is another sort of cl classic questions where you say dead reckoning. I, you know, you ever hear that phrase dead reckoning? I'm not so sure I'm so familiar with that phrase dead reckoning. You know, I got to admit that. Got to have to look it up. What is dead reckoning? Oh. Look it up. Dead reckoning phrase. Huh. 
Let's, let's do that here. How about this? Okay, I'm going to share with you guys Dead Reckoning because, you know, what if you are in a situation where you're not sure? And I think that's probably good to look it up and think about this, right? So let me share that with you guys. Let's go to the browser. You know this, this phrase Dead Reckoning that we're looking at? Okay, dead reckoning, it's called also known as deduced reckoning, is the process of calculating current position by using previously determined reference position. Huh. And advancing that position based upon known or estimated speeds over elapsed time and the course. All right, what does that even mean? You know what that means? Let's go to the iPad. You know what that really means? It means you take a measurement at one point in time, and then as you proceed, you take another measurement to correct your position. It's called dead reckoning. Okay. Take a measurement, proceed, take another measurement, and you adjust. It's kind of like a weird common sense thing in a way, right? Like if you're going from one location to another, let's say you're traveling from home to McDonald's and you're traveling down one street to get to McDonald's, then you have to change your position to continue your travel so that you could get to your destination. That's kind of what they're saying for dead reckoning, you know? So pilots ever evidently have to do that. So here's what they're saying, dead reckoning. A pilot travels for two and a half hours along a straight path all right and then makes a course correction okay so the course correction is heading 35 degrees to the right of the original path for an additional two hours hmm. maybe you have to read that sentence two or three times that's fine you read it over and over again so what they're saying is, here's the deal. Evidently, the pilot is traveling this distance. For how long? 2.5 hours, is that true? You, you guys with me on that? What's the, what's the distance formula? Distance is rate times time. Now, what do you guys know about this? You just know that that distance, whatever it is, maybe we need to label it, but they don't even give you the rate. Maybe they do. Let's think about this. So that's a certain distance. It's rate times time. We know in this case here that the time value is 2.5 hours because they told us that. And then corrects that and goes to the right. And you go, oh, we're going to the right now? I guess so. In other words, from that location, the pilot goes to the right by an angle of 35 degrees for an additional what? Two hours. So I'm gonna put my time over here. Time is two hours. And I guess I'm gonna put that distance. Oh, we already have a label D down here, so. Let's call that A, like before, and then let's call this B, I guess, okay? Because we already have that, that D down there somehow in the picture, but whatever. If the plane has maintained a constant speed, ah, I get it. I get it. What's the rate? The rate is 600, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, my R is 600 miles per hour, okay. I see their point. Hmm. 
How far is she from her starting point? In other words, this is where the pilot ends. This is start, this is the ending. Ah, how far? They want to know that distance D. Okay. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna have to do some arithmetic, okay? Let's do some, some information here because obviously we're gonna have to solve a triangle. Distance A is rate times time. So distance A is at 600 miles per hour. Maybe you wanna put MPH times the time is, isn't that 2.5 hours, right? And then distance B now, you say, what's distance B? Distance B is rate times time. So distance B is gonna be that same 600 miles per hour times two hours. And let's be consistent and say MPH times the two hours. So distance B is really 1200 what? Miles? I don't need a calculator for that one, 600 times two. But what's 600 times 2.5 to get distance A? Right? Because this is the distance formula. Rate, rate, and then each one of these is a time value, right? So we got time here. So what does A become? A is 1,500 miles. What is B? 1,200 miles. And we can already start to see, ladies and gentlemen, remember, here's the A value. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove this color here. So in blue, we, got, we found A, right? And in purple, we found B. I can already see what kind of situation this is. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? How can we find D? What do you think we need? I need that angle, don't I? Because what we have, I can already see it. Do you guys see it? Isn't that side angle side? We have a side angle side situation. So, okay, how do we get that? How do we get side angle side? What's that angle? What do you think, Elizabeth? Is it a hundred? Is Elizabeth correct? How does she know it's one forty-five? Is this a straight angle? Supplementary angles one eighty minus what? What's that? Is that one thirty-five? Straight angle. Is that true? So ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Law of what now? Is that law of cosines? You say, how do you know that's law of cosines? Because you want me to get D. What is D? D squared becomes what? Was it 145? I'm sorry. All right, 135. Oh, oh, sorry. I mean, there is a typo. Thank you so much. Let's go back to the calculator. 180 minus 35. And that's going to be 145. You are correct. Typo. Not typo, but 
an error there. 145. Thank you. Okay, folks. Remember how I look at this. Um, it's kind of like Pythagorean theorem, although it's not Pythagorean theorem because we don't have a right triangle. It's a non-right triangle. But I, there is so many different things that I memorize, like the distance formula. But it's very simple. This is a classic law of cosines question where you have to get an opposite distance from an angle in a triangle where you have side angle side. This is classic law of cosines. And remember, this is d squared. So what is d going to be? Do you guys remember? d is going to be what? The square root of all this. So how do you get this value for D? Second square root, oops. Second square root, second square root what? 1500 squared plus 1,200 squared minus 2 times what? 1,500 times 1,200 times cosine of, 40, uh, cosine of 145, right? So cosine. Close that. And ladies and gentlemen, what do you get? Double check, double check my work, okay? I haven't had that coffee. I left it in my car. Did I make a mistake? Let me double check. Yeah, let me double check. Anybody else want to second that answer? I don't. Can I go up here? Uh, let's try it again, just in case. Let's compare. So, is it fifteen hundred squared? It is. What's the other length? Is it 1,200? It is. Minus 2 times what? 1,500 times what? 1,200 cosine of what angle? 145. Oh. No, no, no. What's that? Did I do a mistake? Well, I made a mistake too. What angle did I put? Did I put 135 cosine? Oh, forgot to square the 1200. Yeah, okay, let's try it again. There's three, three times is a charm. So maybe I had it right the first time. 1500 squared plus 1200 squared. Let's square that. Minus two times 1500 times what? 1200 times cosine of what angle 145 and what do you end up with 2576.6 so we were good originally okay and so ladies and gentlemen that's how far that's the distance that's how far with 2576.6 There you go. Dead reckoning. That's how far you are when you start to end. Okay, you guys okay with that? So, you know, this is a, this is a very interesting process. And again, it's important to understand these little processes where you, 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 you can be traveling along a path and then you make a course correction and then, yeah, you want to find out how far you've gone and, and 
anyway, ladies and gentlemen. And so let's do a little something here. I want to, you know, we got this navigation kind of question here, these navigation questions that are classic too. Because, you know, I don't know about you guys. Let me just kind of say this. Let's go back to the law of cosines somewhere. You know, you have GPS. But, you know, once upon a time, how you navigated was not by a GPS. But you might say, well, why do I have to go back and learn the old way? Well, what do you think's in the GPS? You guys know the technology in the GPS is, is law of sines, law of cosines. So you do have to know some fundamentals about navigation, law of sines, law of cosines. Because one day you might take some courses and they may have you program, you know, using law of sines, law of cosines. And don't be, don't be afraid of that challenge. It's not, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world, but it's, you got to have some knowledge and information. So do you guys happen to know about how, to, how a compass kind of works? Navigation? Navigation, course bearing and heading? Do you guys know what I mean? So this system is a is a system. Ironically, it's it's international, but it's actually done differently in different parts of the world. It's kind of an interesting thing. Is it up north? Down south? What do you call? Going to the right. East, good. And then the other one is what? You guys know what I'm saying? You guys know how to do this. It's not a big deal. But in navigation, this idea of bearing and heading, they might say, hey, north, 30 degrees east. See, what they're going to do is they're going to give you an angle right in here. Okay. That's a 30 degree angle. So how do you start to determine the direction? Kind of called bearing and heading. That's known as the direction. But the language is under bearing and heading. Okay. So you know, it's kind of thinking of you're like starting right here and you want to know where is north 30 degrees east. So let me express this to you guys how this works. OK, they're going to start here with north or south as you read that left to right. So here's the north direction. 30 degrees is the direction from north headed where? East. So this is kind of a northeast heading. Does that make sense? If they say northeast? Okay, but where is the 30 degrees? This is what you guys want to know. 30 degrees, ladies and gentlemen, starting to look at it this way. You start with the north information, and then you do what? You rotate in what direction? East. Start north, rotate what? East. Start north, rotate where? East. How much? 30 degrees. So this angle is what? 30 degrees. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This is the direction. North 30 east. And if I said to you, what if they gave you this example? And that's what they're going to do. You know, they're going to start here 
by saying to you, okay, what if it's south 10 degrees west? Well, you got to start now where? You got to start with the south direction. So that's the first information they're going to give you. And then you got to head how much? 10 degrees in what direction? West. Because you're reading that, ladies and gentlemen. You're reading this. South, west. isn't this southwest? Start south and head west now, right? Because this is, this is the west direction. But how much now? How much you're going to have to go? 10 degrees. So here's what we have here. And then how much does this measure here? What's this angle, ladies and gentlemen? That angle is what? That angle is 10 degrees. So you guys are learning how, I'm gonna start you guys off with learning how to work with heading and bearing, because a lot of times there's other examples that use this information to describe a direction. So we need to know, what, is, what does this actually mean? You just read it left to right. North, start there, and then they give you an angle, and then they tell you, you know, more information of where to go. Either, and they always start north and south, and then they give you an angle, and then they say to you, okay, east or west. Now, I just want to say to you guys, I've been teaching this information for a long time, and other parts of the world, you guys know, they do it backwards. Because I've had some of my students tell me they don't do north-south starting. They do east-west starting. And then they go, you know, north-south. It's kind of a weird thing. They do it backwards. But um, it's interesting. But we're starting, you know, to work with more applications, but this time with other information like heading and bearing. And that's why when I say to you guys, take a look at what I have here. If you look further, you go, oh, my God, Mr. Judge. They got these navigation questions. And they gave me, you know, north, what is that? North 50 degrees east, what does that mean? South 80 degrees east, what does that mean? What does due north mean? What does due south, due east, due west? I haven't shown you that. But due north means you're only headed north. Due south means you're only headed south. But anyway, we're that's where we're headed. So we are going to tackle that. And to let you guys know, I did put some homework. Do you guys have that homework in Canvas, right? Here's our textbook. So if you guys notice, oh, here we go, assignments. If you guys notice in Canvas, what's the deal? We do have law signs, law cosines, and you do have some what applications in that there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say to you guys, you guys definitely wanna get started ASAP because you don't learn this overnight. You don't learn it the night before. You don't even learn it the weekend before. And sometimes students, they do that stuff. They go, you know, I like these other classes better than this. And they, they put math on the bottom of the to-do list. And when you do that, you do yourself a disservice because you're gonna find out like math is a very, very, what it's like a relationship. If you don't make it a priority, it's not gonna make you a priority. And you want to remember that. you got to make it a priority. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed the benefit of law signs and law of cosines because now you can do something significant. Focus on the language. And there you go. And we'll see you guys today, Thursday. I guess so. All right, you guys. Take care. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. So that's going to be your new link. So you may want to hit refresh. And so we're just kind of reviewing at the moment here the newish, um, what is it? The newish, let's see if our audio levels are good. They're good. Uh, I sent people a new link and um, we should be fine. All right. 
So we're reviewing heading and bearing, right? This is where we left off from last time, heading and bearing. Um, what we added you today with our heading and bearing is the direction of due north, due south. Due north is straight up and down. Due south is straight down. Due east is to the right, and then due west is to the left. So we're doing some, you know, some navigation here. It's just a way of describing direction. All right. So describing direction. And I'll check on my end as well. All right. So, okay. Yeah, it's going there. <laughs> okay, folks, we're good. So, does anybody have any questions on that kind of stuff here? You guys clear with a compass? Up is due north. Down is due south. To the right is due east. To the left is due west. And we, we generally read it as north, uh, angle east or west. South, an angle east or west. You just read it left to, left to right as you're reading a book. And then you say, okay, well, how do we use this or why do we use this? Well, we start to get to some kind of interesting applications here, right? <coughs> this is kind of where we left off, ladies and gentlemen. And these are, you know, and these are personally some of my favorite applications because, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a very realistic situation. And so let's go through and let's read this, right? These are word problems. Um, I did start to say that I did send you guys some extra credit. Is that true? Right? So I did want to go to the browser, talk about that. If you go to the assignment portion in the browser now, if you guys notice, I have been giving you, hopefully you're connected to uh, Canvas like I've asked. And so I have been giving some people to keep them honest on some extra credit. You know, keep, what do I mean by keeping people honest? Homework on right, you know, right triangles, area and arc length, law signs, law cosines, you know, these kind of things. Stuff that you should be doing for your homework, they're assigned in your homework, but this is kind of extra credit. So if this is going to be a motivation for you to try to do that, then okay, let's see how well that works, if that's any motivation at all. For some people it is, for some people maybe not, but... All right, so let's look at a navigation question, okay, you guys? So they're saying two boats leave the same port at the same time. All right, so two boats are leaving the same port at the same time. And let me let you guys know what that means here. Okay, this is where that port is. That's like the starting point. So here... Two boats leave the same port at the same time. Now, one travels at a speed of 40 miles per hour in the direction of north 50 degrees east. So, if I said to you guys, hey, what boat is that, north 50 east? Well, this is what they're talking about. Is that right? Let's do a little arrow here. So, how we read this is really in relation to that first boat, north, 50 degrees east. Now, I'm going to call that, I don't know, A, because what's the distance formula? Do you guys remember last week, your distance formula from beginning algebra? Rate times time. So if I call that distance A, this is the rate is 40 miles per hour, and we need a time value. I bet it's going to come up. But when I read this, that's what I'm seeing here myself, okay? So there's your first boat. And then the other, you say, what's the other? There's two boats. So the other travels at what? 28 miles per hour in this direction of south, 80, south, and there's a typo. South what? 80 degrees. That's going to be 80. That's a southeast direction. We're going to call that B, okay, for, for the second leg. So that's B. We'll put that B here. So then B will be what? 
28 times our time. We don't know what time, time is yet. But notice what the question is, right? What are they asking here? How far apart are the two boats after three hours? So in other words, they're asking for this distance here. And, you know, I'm going to call that D, but I'm going to say that's a different D than what you see here. Okay, this is your standard distance formula. Distance is rate times time. So that's a different D. I'm going to say don't even look at that D anymore. But we know what time is now. What's our time? Is our time three hours? So this will be times three, and this will be times three. So what we know is that A here, if we just move this now, A is going to be what? What's our A value? 120, is that right? I don't need my calculator for that. So that's 120 miles. That's A. Okay. Now, what is B going to be? Do you guys know what B is? Is that 84? Good. We don't need our calculator for everything, do we? So that'll be 84. We're going to have to get out the calculator eventually, though. 84 miles. And so they want to know how far apart are the boats after three hours. That's the D part. Okay? And yes, they gave us some time. So, ladies and gentlemen, what you need here to answer this question is an angle. And I make the claim you guys can get that angle. All right? Let me get out my calculator. How do I know you guys can get that angle? What angle is that? As I wake up the TI, what angle is that going to be? Do you guys know? Is that a straight line? So what does a straight line have to measure? Wish I had my sound effects. What does that straight line have to measure? Do you guys know? How do you get that angle? Uh-oh. Huh? A straight, yeah, a straight line should measure 180. Is that true? So what I'm saying here is you take 180 minus the 50. This is 50 degrees, and then minus the other 80 degrees. And what's 180? This is going to be what then? This is going to be 50 degrees? Is that right? It looks like this angle is 50 degrees. Because 180 minus 50 is 130, minus an 80 will be another 50. So this, this arithmetic here is 50 degrees. That's what we just determined here. That's the missing angle. Well, yeah, why is it, the point is, why is it 180? Do you guys remember? This angle, this angle, and this angle form a straight line. So the sum of those three angles needs to be what? 180. Now, another thing I want to mention to you guys is this. What are you going to use to find the distance? Is this law of sines or law of cosine? I wish I had my um, sound effects. Law of sines, law of cosines. What do you guys think? Anybody? Why is it law of cosines? There's a reason, no, no, because we have what? Side, how did that happen? Side, angle, side, and we're trying to find what? The distance, this D here, that's opposite your what? 50 degrees. And we already know A is 120 and B is 84. So we have a side angle side situation. This is the known angle, the known side, and this is the known other side. So that should tell you this is law of what? Cosines, ladies and gentlemen. That's a law of cosines question. Okay, you're with me on that, law of cosines? All righty. And that's why I gave you guys that work to do. 
Right? That's why I did that. Because if you try to do it just the night before, what's going to happen? You're going to remember. So imagine if the Dodgers just practiced the night before a game or the Lakers. Huh? The what? I don't know. I wouldn't want to watch. I'd be like, okay. Anyway, log cosines. Here we go. D squared equals what? You guys remember? 120 squared plus what? 84 squared minus 2 times 120 times 84 cosine of that 50 degrees. So like in my mind, again, there's very little I really memorize. And I want to make sure you guys see my point here. That with law of cosines, it kind of resembles a bit of what? Pythagorean theorem. It's not really, though, the Pythagorean theorem. And so now D is the square root of all this. And let me do this. So here we go. Get out the calculator. Where are you, calculator? Uh, anyway, it's really. Here we go. All right, you guys ready to enter this? Here we go. Second square root, 120 squared plus what? 84 squared minus 2 times 120 times 84, times cosine of 50 degrees. Close that. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you get? What's your distance? 92 point what? Two, and is that miles, I guess? I think that was in miles, right? So there's your distance D. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. 92.2 miles, and that goes right up in here. That's your distance here, 92.2. We're going to go out to the nearest tenths. We're going to be a little bit more accurate. Okay, 92.2 miles. This was a side angle side scenario. And there you go. And that's it. There it is. Let, let you guys, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Law cosines question. And then notice what they did. They just integrated language of uh, bearing and heading. And that's it. That was the new wrinkle. Language of, you know, how to get those angles there. So these are just classic kind of questions in um, a trick course. You know, these are the, this is this is why you study law of sines, law of cosines. You know, in all honesty. You know, this is this is one. This, if you don't do applications, it's like why are you studying these kind of things, right? And the applications, even though they have words, they're not too bad. Okay, they're not too bad. So take a look at this one here. This is exactly the same. This is the same kind of question. Okay, navigation. Two boats leave the same port at the same time. It's the same. And again, this is where the port is, as you guys know. It's right there at the origin. Even though you say, well, that's not really not an origin. That's a compass. Well, kind of. So there's your port, right? You leave in the same port at the same time. One travels at a speed of 40 miles per hour in the direction of north 50 east again. Oh, okay. North 50 east. So that is northeast. There's your 50. Um, we'll call that boat A again. So A will be 
40, notice it's going to be the same thing. That's 120. And it's in miles. Okay? Because they're telling you here, looks like when I did this, I pretty much kept that one the same. And the one I changed was some of the new language. The other travels 28 miles per hour in the direction due south. And, oh, what happened? What happened? Where'd you go? Weird. 28 MPA uh, miles per hour due south. So the one's down here. That's what I wanted to show people here. Okay? So this is B now. And B will be, oh, it was 28 times 3. So that's 84. So, okay. So, you know, we're doing the same kind of thing. So there's 84. I'm going to move this here. All I'm changing was the direction. So A is 120, and B, and that's in miles, is 84. And I know what they're going to ask, how far apart are the boats? That three-hour difference again, it's just boat B is in a different direction now. Okay? There's your boat D. They're going to ask, not boat D, sorry. They want to ask, that's the distance D, how far apart now. However... You need an angle right in here, don't you? Well, I, I don't, is it a right angle? Be careful. It's not a right angle. It's not a 90 degree angle. How do we get the angle of that triangle? Now you might say, what triangle? I know my, my colors are the legs here. One leg is orange, one is green, and the, um, and the hypotenuse. It's not even a hypotenuse anymore. Just the longest side. Is, is purple. So you're looking at a triangle. So in other words, anybody know, how do I get that angle? How do you get this angle? What do you guys notice? Again, don't you have this angle and this angle form a straight angle? So what is that? 180 minus now what? 50 degrees. What does that give you? 130. So this angle now, and that's really the essence that I wanted to do for people, is illustrate to them that by changing one direction of one boat, going simply due south, to compare and contrast here. You know, with the prior example. So now that angle that you're going to use for, is this log cosines again? How do you guys know this might be log cosines? You have side, angle, side. Isn't that log cosines? So we should have called this really a log cosine application. What's log cosines again? Log cosines, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be now what? D squared again will be 120 squared plus 84 squared minus 2 times 120 times 84 times the cosine now. What's the new angle? 130 of 130 degrees right in here. See my point? What's your D? Square root of all these things. So this is just like the last one. It's just that your direction gave you a different angle. So now let's use log cosines in our calculator again. Second square root. 120 squared plus 84 squared minus 2 times 120 times 84 times cosine of, what is that? 130 degrees. What do you guys get for that distance? What's that going to be? 185.5 what? Miles.
There's D. 185.5 miles. That's your distance. And there it is. Law of what? Cosine. So that's why you guys worked on those law of cosines, homework and extra credit. That's why it was there. And that ends here to some... What you guys are looking at, good afternoon to a lot of you guys here. Good morning. Let's go to the iPad. So I did find the error from yesterday. So we want to clarify this. We want to actually do this again so you guys can see that now. What can happen is you can simply draw an incorrect picture. So let's go over this one again as we continue with some of these applications. You guys are going to see more um, problems in this application. We're going to complete this today. So let's try to see what we can do. Okay, so let's kind of do this one again. And let's recall a few things. All right. Uh, here's the deal now. So as you leave the home port you say where's your home port your home port's right here um what's the deal you travel north 70 degrees west so you're going northwest we're going to try this one again with the correct picture and see how this goes and then hopefully this picture is correct right so you're leaving here for 40 miles so that angle maybe we'll change the color here right that angle measures 70 degrees. All right, so we say, okay, that me angle measures 70 degrees now. And of course you're going for 40 miles. So we're going 40 miles. All right, that was nice. We didn't use distance equals rate times time for that first part. Right, and then what does a fisherman do, right? Went for 40 miles. It goes to the next day traveling now, let's go green, 65 degrees northeast. So you say, what is 65? 65 degrees northeast is right in here, as we seen yesterday, and he's traveling for 60 miles. Okay, you guys okay with that? And then you say, okay, find the distance between what? Fisherman's, the, the home port, and Forest Island. So again, from yesterday, they want this distance D. All right, you guys okay with that? Now, I'm just kind of curious. Is there any other information that they gave us? Can you guys see that there? Right, you guys see that there? Is there any other information that they gave us? Now, what did we do yesterday? Do you guys remember? What kind of triangle is this? Does anybody remember how from yesterday? I'm going to change this color. I think from yesterday, we were able to deduce the angle here. Is that true? What was the angle yesterday? And how did we get that? Double check your notes. What do you guys have in your notes? Anybody here? Let's get out our sound effects. We got about at least 10 people at home online, comfortable, maybe somebody at home. Okay. So let's see, ladies and gentlemen, what's the deal? How did you get that angle there from yesterday? Oh, okay. Well, let's see what let's see what we have from yesterday's 
notes there. See if you guys remember. I think I might have even erased it, right? You go, oh, that was 45 degrees from yesterday. It's a different picture. Right? So how do we know that this angle here, see if you guys remember, how do I know that this angle here is 70 degrees from yesterday? Right? How did we know that that's 70? Do you guys recall? What did you guys do yesterday? I think we use transversal. Is that right? Here is line one. Here is line two. They're parallel. And so we use transversal information. You're looking at a transversal, right? So that was what we did yesterday. So if that angle there was 70 degrees, looking at, at a transversal, the other angle there is 70 degrees. And then that gives us all the information we need. Is that right? Do you guys remember that? So let's get out the TI again. Let's open this up. And so this is a straight line. So from yesterday, we got that 45 degree angle. And that was good from yesterday because why? What is this? Side angle what? Side. And when you have side angle side, what do, you, what do you guys use? Just like from yesterday. When you have side angle side now, we use what? Log cosines. Is that true? So from yesterday, we know that D squared is going to be what? 40 squared plus what? 60 squared minus 2 times 40 times 60 times cosine of that 45 degrees. So why was it 45 degrees again? Because we have a straight line here, right? This whole thing is a straight line. So if you were saying, well, how did, if you, if you guys are saying, well, how did we get that, right? Well, how do we get it? How do we get it? Uh, let's find out here. Let's go to the TI calculator. If you guys remember that. And how did we get that? That was 180. Minus the 65 degrees, minus the 70 degrees, okay? And then you get that 45. So I want to make sure you guys remember from yesterday that that's how we got the 45 degree angle. And that is why in law of cosines, you got 45 degrees there. All right, so you guys are good with that. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, what is D going to be here? D is the square root of all of this. And so what did we do again from yesterday, right? So if we go to the TI and you said, okay, so we're going to put the square root, right? You get what? 40 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 40 times that 60 times cosine of 45. And we got yesterday 42.5. So from yesterday's work, just like today, that distance for D is 42.5 miles. So let's be careful here again. Hopefully this is going to work out. But the point I want to make is this. That already looks a little bit odd to me in case you guys didn't know. Because you go, you know, one of the one of the tip offs, you might say, what what what's the tip off that something was wrong? The picture has to be right. So whoever designs it really needs to be more thorough with the picture. Has to be more exact. Okay, you guys understand the picture has to make some sense. So already when I look at this picture, it doesn't make some sense at all. But let's hopefully everything is still going to work out. Okay, so it's all based on that picture. That's a big factor. You can't change the physical setting on that. So, all right, so that was 42.5, and that was the distance D that we got from yesterday. So hopefully this picture's gonna be fine. 
And then now you might say, okay, they want to know what the bearing is. How do you get back to the home port, right? Because you were at Forest Island over here and you got to get home. You got to navigate home. That's an extremely important thing to do. Be able to get back home. So you got to navigate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't have to be 40 squared plus 60 squared. It could be 60 squared plus 40 squared. So the question is right in here because the order in which you add doesn't matter. And the order in which you multiply doesn't matter. So that can be switched. Yes. Yes. So you could put 60 squared plus 40 squared because they're kind of like the legs in Pythagorean theorem. So that's really what's going on. The order in which you add or multiply does not matter. Yes, that's a good question. Okay. So, yeah. So if you say, whoa, what's going on there? It's just the order in which you subtract does matter. The order in which you divide does matter. And that's the difference. But anyway, I'm just going to remark that, yeah, the picture looks a little weird to me. But, okay, let's hopefully, this is all based on the picture. It's not the issue with the math. So what I'm going to do now is this. Let's, let's focus on getting back home. This is where we left off. To get back home, this is the next question here, right? To get back home from Forest Island, we have to travel south, right? We got to go how? Notice what I'm saying. I'm going to put a little arrow there. we got to go southwest. West. Southwest. Is that true? we got to go southwest to get home here. So you're going to put southwest. Let's go back. Yeah. South theta what? West. So here's my theta. And like we described yesterday, we create another transversal, right, from yesterday. So here's my first line. Here's my what? Second line. They're parallel. So if you said, okay, here's line one. Here's line two. Remember, we need that diagonal line. And let's kind of draw a nice diagonal line. That's L, which you want to see is that, is that this angle is theta. That's what we're looking for, okay? That is where we left off, finding the, the heading and bearing. In other words, we left off in question B here, okay? So it's really, that's the answer. South theta west. And so from yesterday, I believe we call this H from yesterday, right? That location, that vertice, H for home port. And so I want you guys to really understand what's going on in this picture because the picture is worth a thousand words. Getting that angle theta is how we're going to get we're looking for theta. But what is the relationship, right? So I want you guys to note for that part, if I say to you, this whole angle we're talking about called H for part two, H, that angle, and if you say, could you put angle H? Okay. What is, how do, what is angle H? Isn't it the sum of adjacent angles? Right? Remember, we worked on that in the first week. The sum of adjacent angles, isn't that 70 degrees plus theta? So angle H is going to be that 70 degrees plus theta. Now, what that means is theta is angle H minus 70 degrees. If we solve now for the angle theta here. 
Okay, so be very careful. The picture is really what you can't really change the picture. You can kind of have an approximate picture, but the picture has to be somewhat close. If, if it's not, then you have an issue. So whoever creates the questions has to be very careful with the picture. You can't just randomly draw some of these pictures. Okay. Now, now you say, well, how do we get that angle H, right? Well, we have to use, because what we have now is a triangle now. So we have this particular triangle, and it kind of looks like this, if we say. Let me try to draw a triangle. So I'm going to put 42.5, 40, and what? 60. This is side, side, side. Is that right? And angle H is what you're looking for here. This would be that little H if we label it that way. So double check. Are we okay with that picture? Do you guys see my point? So this is still a law of cosines. You say, well, how does law of cosines work? Here's, your, here's what you're going to do for law of cosines, right? Little h squared, that's going to be 60 squared. And again, the legs don't matter. 40 squared plus 42.5 squared minus 2 times that 40 times a 42.5 cosine angle h. This is the law of cosines. So when you do your algebra, you get 40 squared plus 42.5 squared minus 60 squared. And then cosine H will give you, by using your algebra, 40 squared plus 42.5 squared minus 60 squared everything over 2 times 40 times 42.5. So your H, and that's angle H, now is going to be your what? Inverse cosine, and here you go. Oops. Copy. And so when we did this yesterday, what did we get? Do you guys remember? What angle did we get yesterday, right? Second inverse cosine, put your parentheses. 40 squared plus what? 42.5 squared minus 2. I'm sorry, not minus 2. Minus what? 60 squared. Close that divided by another parentheses. 2 times 40 times what? 42.5, and close that twice. And we ended up with approximately 93 point what? 3 degrees. Okay. So that angle H is 93.3 degrees. This is the blue portion here. But H is the sum of 70 plus theta. So 90, what was that? 93.3, that goes right here. So here's the deal. 93.3 degrees... And so now, does that make sense about theta? Now theta makes a lot of sense. Is that right? I'll put theta up here. This is my point. Your theta makes sense. 93.3 minus 70 degrees. I don't need my calculator for that. I don't have all my coffee. So that's going to be what? 23 point what? 3 degrees. 
Now we can keep it as a decimal or we can do what? We can approximate that to a whole degree if you want, you know, but, and I'll do that. But your final answer now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to remove that. That's our theta. That's 93 degrees. I'm sorry, 23 degrees there. So 93 minus 70. And was it southwest? Yes. There you guys go. So this is how you get back home. Yes, it would be really in a decimal system to be more accurate. But the point is, we're going to keep that as a whole number. We'll approximate it at the end. And that's what I want to share with you guys here. The picture is important. So yesterday, our picture was off because we had the city home port was actually to the right of, you know, Forest Island, and it's really to the left. And even the picture still is not as good as it should be. Okay? Still is not as good as it should be. So, ladies and gentlemen, but as you guys know, the process is important, and that's your angle, and that's how you get back home. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that we go over and find the mistake from yesterday. We found it. I found it. I looked at that and go, okay, what's going on? The picture was wrong. It's not as, uh, you know, if you look at the distances, yeah, it looks distorted. It's a distorted distance picture. So it's still distorted, but okay. You know, so that's going to be a 23.3 degrees. So it's not, um, it's not as beautiful as it should be. So that's, a nav that's your typical navigation question, ladies and gentlemen. How to get back home is typical.